All right, welcome to Unit 1, Principles and Foundations of the United States Government. Uh, obviously, it's an American government class, so we're going to be talking primarily about American government. But before we get there, I want to lay a little bit of a foundation as to how and why governments get started in general. So if you'll take a look at the board here, I got what are the origins of government as kind of our first question that we're going to be looking at. I want to present this information to you in a couple of different ways. Uh, we'll do a bit of a visual representation, and then when we're done with that, we'll take a look at the slideshow. So if you're a visual learner, it'll be all right here. If you're more of a word person, uh, we'll, we'll display the information in two different ways. I highly encourage you, finish the lecture, take some notes. Uh, here we go, getting started. We're talking the four origins of government. Um, the question, what are the origins of government? You could also say, how do governments get started? Why do governments get started? So where we're going to start, you kind of have to feel like you have a time machine and you can go way back in time, about 200,000 years before we even get there. This is what I'd like for you to do. On your paper, simply label it the four theories of government. And just create four boxes for me. Label one of them evolutionary. Force, divine right, and social contract. These are going to be the three, or the four theories that we talk about when we talk about the origins of government. <clears throat> so, starting about two hundred thousand years ago, we're in the middle of the Paleolithic period, and humans are starting to uh, form. You know, they're starting to become hominoids on the earth. We know that. Uh, over time, they evolve into what we currently consider Homo sapiens. Um, so we're, we're going to use our timeline for the Neolithic period, somewhere around there. We're going to start about 10,000 B.C. for the evolutionary theory. So just put 10,000 B.C. and just put all the way to 4,000 B.C. We're going to see some very um, distinct characteristics of this time period for humans during the Neolithic. One of the things we're going to start seeing is farming starts to occur. And as farming begins to occur, people, be they go from being hunter-gatherers primarily to a little bit more of a sedentary lifestyle because they can grow food now. So imagine, if you will, each one of these circles that I'm drawing represents a family unit or a tribe, if you will. And maybe inside each of these is five to ten people living in this tribe. Now you imagine from the very beginning, you've got mother, father, and children. These are the very first forms of government on the planet. In fact, if you take the strongest man versus the strongest woman, biologically speaking, uh, if it just comes down to brute force, the man is going to come out on top. And as a result of that, most human, in human history, most governments have been patriarchal. You take the word padre means father, madre means mother. Uh, patriarchal societies are guided by the male. Matriarchal societies are guided by the female. And so for our demonstration today, 10,000 to 4,000 BC, you've got the family units acting as the first version of the family. And the father is more or less the government or the leader of the government. What happens is, over time, imagine that these groups are all living in their respective locations. Uh, they're living their lives. They're trying to uh, survive, more or less. And just imagine that a river runs through this encampment. And uh, at some point... One of the people from this government decide, again, just a family unit, a tribe, one of the people from this government decide it would be beneficial if we had a dam in this river. So they dam up the river, preventing people on this side from getting water. Now just imagine uh, for yourself, what's going to happen if one group of people prevent another group of people from having a common necessity, water, something that we all need? And the answer is quite obvious. It causes confrontation, it causes war, it causes problems, it causes this group to fight with this group. And what happens is one of these groups comes out on top. And as a result of one of those groups coming out on top, 
they put the other group under submission. And that's why we call it force theory of government. And over time, uh, what happens is, now just imagine, let's say one of these, uh, as one of these groups becomes kind of the head group, the head uh, government, that from this group they produce, oh, we'll say uh, uh, just a very strong, great leader. And that guy has a, has a child. And he produces a son. And that son says, well, my father was the, he was the head of this government. He was the leader, so now I'm the leader. And when he dies, he passes it on to his son. You can see how this is where kings and queens get started, this notion that because I was born into a certain family, because my father was the original ruler, now I get to be the ruler. That's why we call this divine right, divine meaning of God or from God, and the right to rule, divine right rule. Just one more theory of, of how governments get started. And if you'll think about it, kings, queens, monarchs, this is how most of human history has been run. And if you think about it in terms of, you know, we go back all the way from 4,000 B.C. all the way up to the 1700s. Uh, is how long we're going to start seeing this monarchical rule because it comes up to the 1700s before the Enlightenment period starts. And it's through the Enlightenment thinkers like Montesquieu and Hobbes and Locke that we begin to come up with this notion of the social contract. And if you will, just think of the social contract as people, uh, you know, governing themselves and living in a, in a, in a rather peaceful society where uh, you know, everything is good for everyone for the most part. The notion of the social contract, a contract being an agreement you make between the government and that you make between other people in the community. So the original form of government, evolutionary theory, it begins as a, a notion of a family. One family takes over a certain area uh, through force, creating a central government. Over time, that one family... Uh, they, they maintain their control through bloodlines, divine right. And eventually people get tired of being ruled by kings and queens, and we develop something called the social contract. One more time, just to see it in word form, what are the origins of government? This is what you should be able to answer uh, by the time we're done today. Government evolved from and was a natural extension of the family. That's the easiest definition I can think of. We've got our picture here, mom, dad, child just as we discussed here in our illustration. The primitive head of the family emerges as the leader and decision maker of the government. One of those family units become the head or the, the, you know, the central government for a given area, and there becomes competition for limited resources, and it produces conflict. And it is that conflict that creates a new government through submission and force. Through force, one group of people, they're brought under submission, creating another government. And here we have our, our primary source cartoon, obviously, where Europeans are meeting natives. We know the story. We know how that turns out. Force theory, which leads us to divine right theory. Over time, you have one family group that seems to come out or emerge as the overall uh, head of the government. So we say power derives from God and authority is given to a king or queen through bloodlines. The power of the monarch is absolute. And defiance of the monarch can result in imprisonment, torture, and or death. And it is for this reason people become tired of monarchs. They don't want to live under monarchical rule. They want to live by their own conscience, their own guidance, self-government. I know it's, it doesn't sound crazy to us, but in the seven, six, late 1600s, early 1700s, very crazy idea that you would give up some of your individuality and in return you submit to a central government. And that central government promises you things like peace, protection, and rights, like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which is obviously some ideas uh, that great thinkers from the United States are going to put inside our documents as well. I'm getting ahead of myself, we're getting there. This is the four origins theories, evolutionary theory, force, divine right, social contract. You should be able to explain that. If you have any questions, obviously you can always feel free to hit me up. Keep going through the module. Keep going through the assignments. You know where I'm at. Thanks so much. Have a good day.